matte shots have a long and illustrious history in motion pictures. Their use dates back to the silent era and such films as The Thief of Baghdad. Craig Barron, co-owner of Matte World in Novato, California, is a foremost historian on matte painting. It's recognized among the people that I know that uh, a gentleman named Norman O'Don is probably one of the first, if not the first, uh, sort of father of matte paintings. And he used matte shots uh, around the turn of the century. The first examples of this were uh, what's called a glass shot. There's a camera set up with a uh, piece of glass that the camera is photographing through. And the matte artist actually paints on that piece of glass out on location. Now, the disadvantages to that are that the crew has to wait until the matte artist is finished doing that painting. In 1911, Dawn developed an easier process called the latent image technique. News of this method spread across the Atlantic, where an English matte artist, Percy Pop Day, began to use it in 1914. So now the uh, glass is still out on location. You're photographing through the glass. But instead of a matte painting being there, it's just a black silhouette. So that when the camera photographs through that piece of glass, the exposure is held back. The information is then recorded later with the matte painting back in the studio. In his 33-year career, Pop Day used the latent image process to create hundreds of matte shots in more than 45 films. His credits include the 1940 remake of The Thief of Baghdad, 60 Glorious Years, and The Mikado, for which Day created Japanese temples on a London soundstage. Once matte artists were able to paint in a studio instead of on location, the quality of the paintings improved immensely. In 1939, Gone with the Wind required more than 100 flawless matte paintings. A small army of painters, overseen by photographic effects supervisor Jack Cosgrove, was charged with bringing the Old South back to life. Nearly all of these matte paintings employed the latent image technique. This spectacular Atlanta cityscape was created by filming a dirt road on the MGM backlot in Culver City, California and then adding the painting later in the special effects studio. Stop. The crew of the Yank is coming! I'm afraid so, ma'am. The army's pulling out. Here's a film that is supposed to be taking place in the Civil War South. It was photographed, for the most part, in Culver City. There are hundreds of map paintings in that movie. Uh, Civil War battlefields, Terra, all these things were created with map paintings. With map painting firmly established as an important visual effects medium, new masters of the craft began to emerge. Walt Disney admired the work Percy Day's stepson, Peter Ellenshaw, had done on Treasure Island. In 1948, Walt brought the Englishman to Hollywood to work full-time for Disney Studios. He would always be telling people here that he had a young artist in uh, England who'd worked on Treasure Island, and he made it so you didn't have to go to some island. He could make it look as though it's in, in the island by painting these things. Ellen Shaw became a valued member of the Disney team. In 1960, his stylized matte paintings of England won him an Academy Award for Mary Poppins. This is what you might call a fortuitous circumstance. Look there. Mary's cheery jaunt over the rooftops of London was Ellen Shaw's tour de force. All of the backgrounds are matte paintings by Ellen Shaw and his staff. Well, Mary Poppins was an exciting film mainly because Walt Disney was involved from the very beginning. You didn't have to make it so real that it didn't look fanciful. It's a wonderful film. Everybody still loves it, don't they? While he was at Disney, Ellen Shaw began to work on his own paintings on the side. In 1987, he retired from the film business to pursue fine art. Peter occasionally emerges from retirement to help out his son, Harrison, who heads up Disney's Buena Vista visual effects. The two painted side by side on the hit film, Dick Tracy. Meanwhile, one of Ellen Shaw's former associates, Albert Whitlock, had also become recognized as a top matte artist. 
Whitlock's outstanding career at Universal Studios was highlighted by two Academy Awards and by his work with one of the world's greatest directors. Hitchcock, of course, was the outstanding director in my life. I had a special relationship with him. Um, now, of course, uh, he, was, he was a master, unquestionably, and uh, as far as match shots were concerned, and anything else for that matter, he always was able to tell you what he wanted, but why he wanted it. Mr. Ron! Watch out! Look out! Look out! Watch out! Alfred Hitchcock asked for this painting from the birds to give a bird's eye view of the chaos created by the film's airborne antagonists. To create the shot, Whitlock combined a live action street scene with this painting. The addition of live birds resulted in one of the film's most memorable images. One of his favorite expressions was, if you want to make a movie, you get four good scenes that the audience will remember later on. So then you just string it together with a bit of story. Whitlock continued to paint spectacular shots for Universal. In 1974, he was honored with an Academy Award for his paintings, which, combined with miniatures, portrayed the devastated Los Angeles in earthquake. In this dramatic panorama which ends the film, Whitlock deftly incorporated live-action fire elements to provide a final look at the ravaged cityscape. Albert Whitlock has consistently added a degree of realism to matte painting and special effects in general that wasn't there before he arrived on the scene. His work is, is truly flawless and uh, wonderful to watch. Albert Whitlock continued painting until his retirement in 1988. By that time, one of his former assistants, Sid Dutton, had firmly established himself as a top matte artist. Okay, move the card, camera right. Sid Dutton showed promise in the beginning. I mean, I could make jokes about having to whip him into shape, but I really didn't have to. I mean, of course, I owe everything to Al Whitlock. I mean, he taught me everything that I know about my craft. I, I did have a painting background, but I mean, it, it didn't do me any good for this particular craft. As his Oscar-winning paintings show, Albert Whitlock is truly a master of the matte painting craft.